I want to give you a bit of a book review on the story of Christianity so you can see more about what this book's about, what it has to offer, and you may want to read it yourself as well. Great to have you back this week. My name is Ryan Netzer. I'm glad you're here. This has been a great week, and I'm really excited to share with you about what's been going on. Got to go up to Niagara Falls with my family, have my son up on the bicycle, take a look at uh, these views from Niagara Falls. Also with this nice weather, it's a good chance to get out and do some, uh, some stuff with my dad outside. You know, since COVID's been going on, it's been difficult to do a lot with my parents, especially during the winter when uh, people weren't vaccinated and it was uh, cold outside. You know, you didn't want to be inside just for that risk, you know. So uh, I was able to get out with my dad and uh, he had some wheels that he had around the house, extra Toyota truck wheels, so thankfully he gave them to me and I uh, was able to put them on the truck. It was a good chance to do some stuff with him. So beyond what I've been doing out there, like uh, with the family, with my father, I've been reading this book called The Story of Christianity, and I want to share it with you. It's by Justo Gonzalez. The Story of Christianity, Volume 1, which takes you from the beginning of the Christian religion with Jesus the Apostles all the way to 1500 at about the time of the Protestant Reformation and Martin Luther. The Story of Christianity also has a second volume, which I'm reading now, and I'll tell you about that more in another video. So I wanted to give you a bit of a book review on the story of Christianity so you can see more about what this book's about, what it has to offer, and you may want to read it yourself as well. I highly recommend the book, and I'd like to give you an overall impression of what I've experienced reading this book. You know, Justo Gonzalez's history is a bit of a fresh take because it's modern. It's from 2010, and it uses all uh, of the available sources that are available in a more contemporary way. I've read other histories, including uh, Kenneth Scott La Tourette's history from uh, you know, mid early 1900s. And, you know, these histories are, are good to read and, uh, helpful, but I think that there's a bit of antiquated language in them. There's also, uh, a bit of uh, a limit on the sources that we have some new things. So, uh, I recommend reading like the latest thing to find out what's, uh, been able to be uncovered and researched, uh, more recently. So for Justo Gonzalez's History of Christianity, it's definitely a good book for that. Also, the language is more like our modern language, so it's easier to understand. It's not written at a highly academic level, so it would be accessible to 
a large number of people. I also want to mention the way that Justo Gonzalez has written this history. It's a little different than others. He's tried to separate from them and make his own mark on the story of Christianity. And so he's included more parts about women that have been often overlooked. And he also includes more parts about the colonies and how the colonial period when Europe was colonizing the New World, how that not only impacted the New World, but how the New World impacted the European colonizers, because it wasn't just a one-way influence. And I think that it's helpful to see how the New World affected the Europeans as well. So this is uh, uh, some, some great additions, I think, that are helpful for, um, for anybody looking into reading about the history of Christianity. When I was reading the story of Christianity by Justo Gonzalez, I found a couple of key themes present throughout. I wanted to share them with you. One of them is that Christianity is not contained in any one church organization. So as you read the story, you find out that Christianity has always been a group of organizations, not just one. Uh, some people would say that this one church is, is what Christianity is, or this one you know, part of the world had a lock on what Christianity was. But really, from Justo Gonzalez's perspective, Christianity has been in many organizations, in many regions, and that this authentic faith, following Jesus Christ, truly following Him, and devoting your life to glorifying God, the gospel message, is something that's been done in many places, in many parts of the world, over time. Another key theme that you find in Justo Gonzalez's story of Christianity is that reform and renewal are always needed. I think Justo Gonzalez shows this theme throughout his book, sort of like the way that a person also needs renewal and reform as they go through their life. No person is fully, perfectly, correctly following Jesus Christ, and no organization is either. And so, even from the earliest part of Christianity, that's Paul in the New Testament, he's talking about how the Leaders of the church need to be corrected. He's talking about how there's these Judaizers that are changing what the gospel message is, adding things to it, and that there's reform needed in these early parts of the faith that are still uh, being written about in, in the Bible. Soon after, you find reform is also being needed. You find these early church fathers, other church leaders that were all calling for renewal. Um, bishops at the time of Constantine, which is only 300 AD, also calling for renewal. Um, the Czech Church, the nation of uh, the Czech Republic today, that ethnic group uh, was under the Germans. It was the province of Bohemia. But, you know, they were also calling for renewal 300 years before Martin Luther. It's just been the way that the church has always been. There's always the church doing its work. And then people coming in saying, you know, we could do this better. And so I think Justo Gonzalez has uh, communicated that well. And I think you'll find it in the book. For this book review, I want to share two last quotes that I believe will give you an idea of what Justo Gonzalez uh, puts in his book and what you can expect to get out of it. This first one comes from the introduction. The notion that we read the New Testament exactly as the early church Christians did without any weight of tradition coloring our interpretation, is an illusion. It is also a dangerous illusion, for it tends to absolutize our interpretation, confusing it with the Word of God. Justo Gonzalez mentions this point early in the introduction, and I think it's very important for us to think about and uh, a memorable quote from the story of Christianity, Volume 1. As we read the New Testament, many of us think that we're reading it and we're able to discern what God is saying through the, those words that we're reading, through those verses, through those chapters. But Justo Gonzalez says it's not a pure reading of the New Testament. It's not exactly like the early Christians. It's not exactly like the writers who wrote the New Testament. It's not exactly what God has communicated at that time exactly. Because we have tradition, we have personal experiences, we have 2,000 years of church history all weighing in on how we interpret it. So we have a lens that we're looking through 
between us and the New Testament. And to think that we don't have that is, is a mistake, according to Justo Gonzalez, and I do agree with him about this. We also don't want to absolutize our interpretation, meaning that because I think I'm reading the New Testament perfectly, then what I'm reading and what I think of it, I'm calling it essentially the Word of God. I'm basically saying that I know what God intended to say through these verses. And this is something that's dangerous because no one can say that they have 100% lock on what God has intended to say through the New Testament. And so we don't want to have this absolute interpretation. We want to say that there is room for the other interpretations that other people are making. Two, two limits, but at least that we accept that there are other interpretations that cannot uh, cannot be that all other interpretations are completely incorrect. So um, to give room to others to weigh in on the interpretation of verse, I think is very important. And uh, I think a, a good contribution from Justo Gonzalez. The other quote I wanted to share with you from Justo Gonzalez's book is actually about Clement of Alexandria, and he died in 215 AD. For the truly wise, faith is the first principle, the starting point on which reason is to build. But Christians who are content with faith and do not use reason to build upon it are again like children who are forever content with milk. I think that what Justo Gonzalez is trying to say about Clement here and Clement's way of thinking is that the truly wise person, they have their faith in Jesus Christ, they follow him, they read their Bibles, they learn from their scripture, they learn from Christian teachers, they participate in the church, and they also use their reason to apply all that they're learning, all that their faith has taught them into their daily lives. So they're not just uh, memorizing Bible verses and sitting at their house and praying and hoping everything works out. They're actually going into the world, they're applying what they're reading, they're trying to work out their faith in all the different situations that they face. And this is when you apply reason and use reason on top of that faith, that faith is informing the reason. And I think that that makes the case for the great education that we have, the learning that we receive, teaching each other, not just in the church, but outside the church as well. A wise person is seeking to know all things that are going on in our world. They're looking for, um, they're learning from history, like history of the church. They're learning from history of the world. They're learning about economics. They're learning about whatever their skill is, whatever their job is. They're learning that thing because it's wise to use your reason to build upon your faith. It's not just something to have your faith separated from everything else and um, sort of here uh, limiting yourself like a child who's only eating milk. I mean, a child uh, cannot just drink milk all the time. They need to move on and begin to eat solid food. So I think that Clement's uh, uh, advice is, is, wise, is, is wise and good for us and that uh, what Justo Gonzalez said about him is helpful for us. You're going to find so many great uh, quotes and, and lots of great information in this uh, book, Justo Gonzalez, The Story of Christianity. I highly recommend it. I'll put a link down in the description and you can find that book for yourself. I'm really glad I had a chance to share this with you today and I hope it's a blessing for you. We'll see you in the next one.